right. So we'll get started. I see all four of us, but I'll confirm by roll call of Commissioner Cameron. Uh, I'm here. Commissioner O'Brien. I am here. And Commissioner Zuniga. I, um, I'm here. Okay. Excuse me, guys. I just am bringing up the document. My, um, I'm using two screens here. And um, just a reminder, as I, as I find the document, um, that we are, again, using remote technology, uh, <clears throat> given the relief that Governor Baker provided to us and other public bodies. Um, um, during the pandemic, actually, the relief was given almost a year ago in March, uh, so that public bodies like us could use this kind of technology to meet um, remotely. So here I am, just one minute. I wanna make sure I've got the right agenda. There we go. So it's 11, just past 11 o'clock, and now we're meeting um, on February 17th. We're meeting for a second time for a full public meeting. Um, today's uh, number is 336. Again, I want to thank our, our team for being especially nimble to be able to accommodate this public meeting, a little bit out of order, but we're thankful um, for the ability to meet uh, virtually. It allows for us to get some work done in a good, timely fashion. And with that, um, we have one item. It's a legal update. I'm going to turn to Executive Director Wells to set the stage, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, so this is sort of a follow-up from a matter that uh, was discussed in executive session with the commissioners on, on two occasions. And those um, minutes that, was, that matter was concluded, those minutes were made public. But the reason we're here today is the SJC did solicit amicus briefs on certain litigation in which the NGC is not a party, uh, but it's regarding Massachusetts blackjack rules. So because of that, we thought we should uh, follow up, particularly given the commission's uh, note in the uh, executive session discussions uh, to address this should the SJC uh, make a call for briefs. So I'm gonna turn it over to General Grossman, General Counsel Grossman, just for some procedural background, so you have the lay of the land and some more information about filing remittance briefs in general and the process for that. So I'll turn it over to uh, General Counsel Grossman. Great, thank you. Um, if I uh, may, Commissioners, just by way of uh, background, as Ms. Wells just mentioned, you'll recall that, of course, there are the two pieces of ongoing litigation to which the Commission is not a party that relate to the interpretation of the prior version of the Commission's blackjack rules. The cases are captioned as DeCosmo versus Blue Tarp Redevelopment LLC, and then as Schuster versus Wynn Resorts Holdings LLC. The DeCosmo matter was filed in Massachusetts Superior Court and dismissed by the judge in response to a motion to dismiss. And the Schuster matter was filed in the United States District Court for Massachusetts. It was not dismissed by the judge in response to a similar uh, motion to dismiss filed in that case. Each case, though, revolves around essentially the same issues pertaining to the interpretation of the commission's blackjack rules. The DeCosmo matter, having been dismissed by the trial court judge, is now on appeal before the Supreme Judicial Court because the federal court matter involved essentially the same legal issue the parties requested and the judge agreed to certify the question uh, bearing on the central issue in the case to the SJC for review to help ensure that the matters are resolved on uniform legal grounds. I, you'll recall, was contacted by counsel from the law firm Brown Rudnick, who represents the defendants in each of the respective cases. They inquired as to the commission's position with respect to the filing of an amicus brief. Um, the commission, for those purposes, met an executive session on January 14th and January 27th to discuss that question and to set its strategy moving forward. Ultimately, as reflected in the meeting minutes that are posted on the commission's website, the commission decided not to pursue the filing of such a brief at that time. 
However, there was discussion as to whether the commission would reconsider its position if a request to do so were to come direct from the SJC. It was agreed that the commission would certainly reconsider its position in the event such request uh, was received. We're here today uh, because the SJC has solicited the filing of amicus briefs in the Schuster case. Uh, the Schuster case is scheduled for argument before the SJC on April 7th. The specific issue the SJC has set out for the brief um, is the exact same question that was certified by the federal district court. And that is, did the February 11, 2019 version of the rules of blackjack that were published by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission and posted on its website in accordance with 205 CMR section 147.02, permit a Massachusetts casino to pay six to five odds to a player who is dealt a winning blackjack hand while not otherwise playing by the six to five blackjack variation rules that were articulated in rule 6A of the February 11, 2019 version of the rules of blackjack. So that is the question that has been certified and that would be the subject of any amicus brief if it were to be filed. In making a decision as to whether to pursue the filing of an amicus brief, there are a few factors you may now wish to consider. At the October 8, 2020 public meeting, the commission discussed the blackjack rules among other table game rules and ultimately voted to amend a number of the rules and regulations, including those pertaining to blackjack and the six to five variation of that game in particular. The changes were designed to ensure clarity. And now, uh, if I may, on that point, I wanted to ask uh, Ms. Wells just to, to jump back in and offer. Uh, a little yeah, yes, thank you. So, um, you know, on, on that, I think it's helpful to note a couple of facts uh, that, that are just uh, a matter of public record. Uh, one was, is that uh, the IEB purposely did not take enforcement action against either casino at the time uh, these lawsuits were filed or since then. And they do have that ongoing obligation to look at the integrity of the games. And also, um, it's helpful to note that the clarification of the rules, um, that was consistent with how the games were being operated at the time uh, related to the uh, time frame for this litigation. So I think those uh, two facts which are um, are out there in the public record are helpful in that, um, you know, I think that the commission did recognize uh, that it was a neutral party in this record in this litigation and the commission wanted to maintain that neutrality. Um, and, but they also noted that the amicus brief was not necessary to ensure confidence in the integrity of the games. And those, those two factors, I think, uh, that are part of the record uh, are, are important in establishing that uh, there is uh, information out there publicly demonstrating uh, the integrity of the games at the Massachusetts Casino. Well, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Grossman. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Do, Unless the commissioners have any questions. Director Wells, I just want to point out that um, um, the Director Lilios is available on a, a by phone. Yes, um, she just, is on. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that she was just that she called in. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you want to turn it back then to Todd? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, uh, Counselor. Thank you. Uh, just so, just a few other quick things to possibly consider. Um, under the rules of appellate procedure, amicus briefs are due 21 days prior to the hearing before the court on the particular matter. In this situation, the amicus brief would be due on or about March 17th um, if the commission were elected to file one. So time is a bit of the essence at this point to, uh, uh, to move forward. If the commission concludes that it would like to pursue filing a brief, a request to do so would have to be made to the Attorney General's Office of the State Solicitor. Um, there is a specific process for making such a request that includes uh, providing a description of the nature of the case, the due date, the issues the brief would likely address, the reasons for filing an amicus brief, any risks entailed, and whether the necessary uh, internal client agency permissions have been sought. 
In accordance with the process set out by the Attorney General's office, there are a number of factors that they may or, or may not consider in determining whether to uh, take on any appeal, including likely the filing of an amicus brief. It involves things um, like whether the law and facts provide strong arguments, whether the legal issues have importance beyond the particular case, whether an adverse decision would harm the Commonwealth's legal interests, uh, then and the need to preserve the Commonwealth's credibility in the appellate courts. The Attorney General, of course, must also ensure that the Commonwealth and its agencies take consistent legal positions uh, in the appellate court. So those are just some of the factors that they weigh in determining whether to move forward uh, with filing in the publicly available minutes of the executive sessions uh, previously referenced, the commission has outlined the considerations it weighed in reaching its original decision uh, relative to filing of a brief. And uh, Karen just mentioned uh, some of them, so I'll just hit them really quick. And these, again, are all set out in the meeting minutes uh, available to the public. Uh, by consensus, the commission concluded that based on the facts and circumstances, including those contained in the record of its previous review of the matter. The benefits were not compelling enough to pursue the filing of an amicus brief. The commission decided that filing of an amicus brief was not necessary to ensure public confidence in the gaming operation in Massachusetts. The commission recognized the importance of its neutral position though, and that given the manner in which the prospect of filing an amicus brief was brought to its attention at the time, that filing a brief then would not prevent uh, any suggestion that it was anything but neutral when it came to its oversight of the industry. Specifically concern was raised that it may appear that the commission was aligning itself with the licensees if it were to file a brief and uh, at, in the fashion the idea came to us um, and that it may appear to be compromising its independence. But all that being said, the commission did leave the door open uh, to reconsider its decision if a direct request for a brief was received uh, by the SJC. The SJC has now solicited, uh, generally solicited briefs um, through an order and it has posted that on its amicus uh, website. So those are just some of the considerations and, and the past uh, procedure that brought us here today. So I can uh, I can pause there, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, uh, and turn it back over to you. Commissioners, um, so there's a question before us. Um, there is this uh, now a solicitation of briefs from the SJC, which we um, recognize could occur and it has occurred. Commissioner O'Brien, would you like to start? Uh, I, I would, thank you, Madam Chair. I had two questions for you, Todd. I don't know whether you can answer them. The first is whether the general practice when they get a certified question at the SJC is to make a general solicitation for amicus briefs or whether this is only done selectively. Um, and then I have another question about the uh, Solicitor General's factors, one of them that you listed off, but I don't know if you could answer the first one. Sure. It, it's my understanding that uh, the SJC will solicit briefs in each of the ways you reference, sometimes by direct requests to an individual or, or party or, or a group of, of individuals, other times just a general one. The specific request, uh, according to what I've been told, is very uh, uh, limited in the times it's used. And it's not a frequent occurrence where the SJC will reach out necessarily to a specific entity and ask that a brief be filed. It's far more common that a general solicitation be done for briefs on a particular case and then the SJC typically tees up what the issue is. Um, they don't do that in every case. They don't solicit briefs in every single case, but it, it's fairly common. If you go on their website now, you'll see there's an, quite a number of uh, soli solicitations in uh, many of their cases. And that is exactly what's been done in this case. They've posted um, the solicitation on the website with just the question that I read earlier, um, which is not uncommon. 
And has anyone else filed or indicated that they're going to file an amicus brief? That and you know of? I, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And then in terms of the factors for the Solicitor General's consideration for whether we'd be allowed to file, one of the things you talked about was needing to maintain the Commonwealth's credibility in the appellate courts. Uh, is Commonwealth defined as the Attorney General's office or the agency? You know, I'm thinking of a situation where you know, we've had staff come through IEB saying consistently they did not violate these rules. You know, we're doing a technical fix to make it clear, et cetera, et cetera. There would be maybe a risk if, you know, the SJC comes down and interprets that differently to the credibility of the commission. But I don't know if that rises to the level of, um, you know, what that means for the Solicitor General. Is it restricted to credibility of the Commonwealth broadly or credibility of the agency who may be at question? You know, I think there, there could be a number of ways to interpret that provision. The one that jumped out at me, and perhaps the most obvious to me, was that they, the AG's office won't be inclined to um, take a position that is clearly inconsistent with some of the principles that the office has stood for or that the Commonwealth has forwarded over the years. And they, they don't want to take wholly inconsistent uh, positions on the same issue because that would lose the credibility of the courts um, and its ability, the AG's ability to represent the Commonwealth interest. So that was kind of the thing that I was thinking about when I read that, uh, but I think there are other similar considerations like the one you mentioned uh, where they, they could look at how it would be perceived if a negative, so-called negative finding, it depends how you, where you're coming from, right. but a yeah. negative finding. Right. I mean, contrary as opposed to negative, maybe is the word. Contrary. Right. 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 Okay. Thank you. So those are just some threshold issues. If um, Commissioner Zuniga, would you like to go next? And Commissioner yeah, Byrne, I'll circle back to you. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I was. Thank you. I was just going to pick up on the last point. Um, that would be up to the Attorney General to decide. Uh, wouldn't it? Because they ultimately approve this filing of an amicus brief. Is that is that a fair statement? That is that is a fair statement. I th I think you know the agency's preference though could be highly persuasive as to whether there's an interest in doing it. So your this is really an important part of the decision making process. The AG ultimately will decide whether um, to move forward or not, but the commission view of it is, is definitely an important piece of it. Thank you. Commissioner Cameron. Um, I don't have any questions. I do have a thought about it though, which is um, um, I think, uh, I understand the difference between a general call for briefs and a specific call for us to provide a brief. And I see a clear distinction there. And I don't know that anything else has changed, meaning um, our decision earlier, I don't know that anything else has changed other than this general call. So that was just my thought on, um, on the matter. Todd? Well, I, I think that's think that's totally true. I mean, there nothing has changed other than the fact that the SJC posted a solicitation for briefs. Um, so I, am I correct to understand, Commissioner Cameron, that what you're saying is that it's not, it wasn't a solicitation directed to the MGC precisely, um, that that's why you don't see a big distinction from where we were before? Yeah, I know that in our discussion previously, we talked about if we were asked specifically, then we would certainly reconsider. But in the explanation I received about the difference between a general call and a specific one, I, I, I do see that distinction. and. Um, you know, our, our, our first decision about not having to weigh in, A, to remain neutral, and B, that we didn't think there was um, an issue with the um, 
credibility of the games, the integrity of the games. Uh, I think I, I believe those are still the case now. Commissioner Zinnica. Well, you know, I, I I am maybe on the on the on the other side of the argument, but it's not a you know, it's not a um, uh, it's a sixty forty as I like to say. <laughs> it's a, um, in, in some of these decisions, um, in 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 the in the notion that as as um, you know uh, the agency with the technical expertise um, in in this matter, um, our actions or or inactions, if you will, um, maybe speaks volume volumes. Um, at, you know, as as we all seem to agree, um, but um, there may be some benefit in in at least attempting. Um, uh, uh, the submission of an amicus brief uh, for the benefit of the SJC in its process. Granted, I, and I think it's also, um, uh, you know, uh, tempered, if you will, um, if, if we're struggling with whether or not in terms of appearances, I think that is um, effectively tempered by the fact that it's ultimately up to the Attorney General to decide whether um, in our position, um, and in the process of the AJC to file it or not. In other words, to approve to approve it. So th those two factors lean towards uh, uh, saying, you know, let's let's give it a try, um, with with the added uh, uh, caveat that um, perhaps time is of the essence. Um, but again, you know, willing to be persuaded, uh, leaning towards uh, uh, filing it because I understand it's not it's not a slam dunk either way. I agree. Actually, I just had a follow-up question for Loretta, if you are on, or, or Karen, about IEB's process. Um, you made the point that IEB did not take any adverse action against them either at the time or since then. And just for clarification, am I correct that IEB does not, not issue sort of letters of no action or something if you don't find reason to go forward? So it's not that there That's would have been affirmative statement saying this was not a violation. That is correct. Okay. I, actually, go ahead, I, Commissioner Zunica. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a, that's a great point that, um, you know, that makes me feel on the side of, of filing, if we were filing an amicus brief, because if we had done letters of no action, that would effectively you know, speak volumes in my mind towards um, towards this matter. So I'll chime in now, um, I, and I, I'm, I'm appreciating my fellow commissioners' input. Um, I, I do think, um, to Commissioner Cameron's point, we were very confident um, in in our earlier briefings that there had not, that the licensee had complied with the, the rules of the game. It's not, that's fair to say it that simply, correct? Um, is that, is yes. that fair? That that's our understanding and we, and, and, and again, to Commissioner O'Brien's point, we heard that in, while there wasn't an affirmative action to say there had been compliance, we were briefed on that. Um, today, we have a, a a different um, opportunity than what was presented to us and we discussed in executive session. Um, I understand Commissioner Cameron, uh, you know, making a dis distinction between a specific request or general um, solicitation of, for amicus briefs. I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily weighing um, the general versus specific as, as closely as you, Commissioner Cameron. I'm familiar with the general request I do think that perhaps the Gaming Commission could be a public service here um, and, and, and help illuminate the issue for the, the, the SJC um, should the AG's office um, agree that, that we could file. So from the perspective of public service, um, <clears throat> whether it's specific or general, I think there's an opportunity for us to to provide the expertise that we have. Um, and in terms of the uh, timeline, 
I, you know, I, I think that it's one that with the right resources should the AG's office uh, permit, we could, we could meet and be helpful. But I, I'm also open to, you know, any, any reason why we wouldn't be of that public service. Commissioner O'Brien, are you, what are you thinking? Is there, is there? Uh, I, I'm, I, it's, I'm of the same mind as you in terms of, um, to, to Commissioner Cameron's point, there had been obviously a direct solicitation to us that to me is, yeah. you know, an obvious response that we would file. Yeah. Um, this is a, a little step back from that in terms of it was a general call. My memory from doing appellate work, again, is they don't ask for amicus briefs all the time. So it does indicate some level of interest. It is kind of an obscure um, you know, as someone who had to learn the industry and is still learning the industry, there is a benefit to having people who know the games inside and out explain it. Um, I am leaning, um, I think, toward where you and Commissioner Zuniga are, which is it would be helpful potentially. Now, that may be that the Solicitor General looks at the factors that, you know, Ty Roseman's laid out and said, look, this is maybe necessary or helpful or consequential to you, MGC, but I just don't see it in the broader picture. Um, and that would be their prerogative. I'm leaning toward presenting them with the request um, and then letting them make the bigger choice in terms of the interest of the Commonwealth in general. And, and, and I think what I'm hearing from all of you is that the neutrality issue really isn't as much at, at play here due to the fact that there was a solicitation. Is that correct? correct. That's okay. really important. I think yeah. that the, the big shift was yes. that the request came from one party, and we were very careful to say it wouldn't have mattered which party. It, you know, right, it correct. Just, we must yeah. remain neutral. No, and I, am, uh, I am being persuaded that this, as a public service, I really hadn't thought of that, that we could be helpful. I, I also think, um, both uh, you, Chair, and Commissioner O'Brien articulate well the notion of ultimately the prerogative of of the attorney, the Solicitor General, um, to make the, the call on the on the bigger picture. Um, so, you know, I think the, the neutrality concern is 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 ameliorated by both the solicitation and their decision. Uh, Director Wells. So what, uh, what I'm hearing is there, there seems to be a, a consensus uh, to move forward with the process. Um, if that's the case, then um, you know, I can uh, work with uh, Attorney Grossman and we can get moving on this. As, um, as he mentioned, you know, time is of the essence. I think it is a very narrow issue. So the hope is that it, it would not uh, take a lot of resources to complete the brief because it is a very narrow issue. Uh, so if that's if that's what I'm hearing, uh, we can go forward and and move along with that process. It had been marked up for a vote. <clears throat> Is a consensus fine, or should we have a vote? I would recommend a vote. Of Todd, I'll, I'll have you chime. It's always safer to do that. Um, so uh, we might as well go ahead and and have a vote on whether or not to file an amicus brief in the aforementioned litigation. I want to just give um, Director um, Lily Els the opportunity if she can hear and chime in by phone if there's anything she wants to add that that we haven't thought of. There she is. Uh, thank Hi, thank you, Chair, and good morning, Commissioners. I have been following the discussion and have uh, spoken to Karen and Todd uh, previously about this. I uh, certainly support the idea that uh, requesting the AG uh, for the filing of the amicus, uh, you know, on the basis that it could be uh, helpful uh, and could be a public service. Uh, it's not surprising that the SJC uh, issued the solicitation, you know, given that it has not uh, interpreted uh, these rules uh, previously. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I uh, understand the discussion this morning. Uh, I don't think I have uh, anything additional to add, you know, other than uh, acknowledging uh, that the general call for the amicus is in a situation like this with such limited prior interpretation of uh, rules of the Gaming Commission, um, you know, is, is, could be expected uh, in this uh, scenario. So, um, you know, really, I don't have anything further to add. 
Thank you. General Counsel Grossman, do you have anything else you want to add before we close comments? No, thank you. I think we've, we've covered it. Commissioners, have you had seconds? Any additional thoughts that you want to share? I'm seeing no. Um, is somebody comfortable to, to move? Uh, I'm hearing that they'd like a vote. Sure. Um, Madam Chair, I would move that the uh, commission direct the general counsel and or executive director to formally request of the state um, solicitor general uh, the authorization to file an amicus brief in um, the case that we are discussing today. I'll, I'll help on filling that in. Um, yes. Because I have in front of me um, Richard. Uh, Schuster and another versus Wynn Resorts Holdings LLC and others SJC 13060. With that amendment, I second the motion. Any further questions or comments? Okay. Um, then I'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Seneca. Aye. And I vote yes. 4-0. Um, Tanya, thank you so much. All right. And I guess then, um, Karen, we'll, we'll look forward to an update perhaps in the administrative review next week. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense, Commissioner? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we had a productive agenda setting meeting right before this. I again uh, thank everyone for joining us on that. Um, as always, I thank the entire team for its ongoing work. Um, do we have any further business for the commission commissioners that you'd like to address that you thought about since we last meeting? All right, I just um, wanted uh, remind everybody to um, stay really vigilant with your health and your welfare. Uh, <clears throat> as much as we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel, there's a lot of tunnel left. And so we want you to exercise care with respect to your exposures, your health, your loved ones. And uh, again, we appreciate all who are working on the front lines to still address this pandemic. Um, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed um, and uh, want to commend all of our colleagues in the state who are working so hard to, um, to help us get through this with vaccines and, and, and continued restrictions and guidelines. And we thank our licensees for their continued vigilance. So thank you, everyone. And looking forward to um, to getting on the right side of that discussion, but just a big reminder. Okay, um, anything else, commissioners? Just full agreement on, on your words and uh, move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All righty. Um, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And to the entire team, thank you for joining. I vote yes, 4-0. Tanya, and thank you so much for your help today. Thank you, Austin.